This last section is on a little bit of trigonometry, some basic trig. It's used to find the sides or an angle in a right triangle, and you can only use this on right triangles. The acronym is SOHCAHTOA. S-O-H stands for sine of an angle equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Ka, C-A-H, stands for cosine of, the, of an angle equals the adjacent side, adjacent means next to, divided by the hypotenuse. And toa is tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. For the angle A, right here is the angle A, here's my angle, the opposite side goes across, it, it doesn't touch the angle A, opposite side goes across, so that is little a, side A. The adjacent side is the side that's next to it, that's not the hypotenuse. So not the hypotenuse, but next to it is my side B, which is my adjacent side. Little b is across from angle B. And then I have my angle C, which is my 90 degree angle. Little c going across is my hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at angle A, the side that's not the hypotenuse, that's makes up that angle is the adjacent side <clears throat> the si and then the hypotenuse and then across from that is the opposite side. So the sine of A is the opposite side little a divided by the hypotenuse little c. The cosine of A is the adjacent side little b divided by the hypotenuse little c. And the tangent side of A is the opposite, little a, divided by the adjacent, little b. For the angle B, now all I did was switch places because I want you to know that the angle B, in this case, it's labeled A, it's the opposite side. Opposite is over here for angle B. It's wherever you're looking at it. If B was up here, the opposite side would be the little b. Okay. Same thing holds. The sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Sine, cosine, and tangent are actually trig functions. Okay. They take the ratio. I have here a scientific calculator that is on Schoology. So when you're working on Schoology and I allow the scientific calculator and you're just trying to find out what the sine, cosine, the tangent of some angle is, you make sure this is moved over on top of the radian so degree shows. It first was radian, and we're not measuring in radians because we have all degrees for right now. So you want to make sure this is moved over so you have degree, and you press sin, sine, okay, and then you press the angle measure, and you don't have to close the parentheses or anything, and then you press equals. So on my calculator on my phone, um, I, if you to your scientific calculator, you need a scientific calculator. I'm pressing sine, I'm in degrees, and I want, oops, on my phone, I press the angle first, and then I press sine. So I'm, I need 48, and then I'm taking the sine of that, so I get 0 0.7431. 0 0.7431. Okay. It is very common that you go four decimal places out. 
four decimal places out is the ten thousandth. Okay, so it should say round to the nearest ten thousandths. Okay, the cosine of 43 degrees, on this calculator, of course, it's not a calculator, it's a picture. The calculator is found right here in Schoology. So I press cosine, and cosine would come up here, and then I press 43. Now, on the scientific calculator on my phone, I'm going to press the 43 first, and then the cosine and I end up with 0 0.7314 rounded correctly. So this is, and you don't have to put the zero in front. It's common to put the zero in front so that people see the decimal. So this is 0 0.7314. Okay. The tangent of four degrees on my phone, I'm going to press 4, and then I'm going to press tan, and I get 0 0.0699. On here, I would press, make sure this is in degrees, because you're putting in degrees. I press tangent first, so tan, and then I press 4, and equals. And you should get the same thing, 0 0.699. I just don't write well with my finger. Okay, the sine of 26 on the calculator on Schoology, sin 26, as long as it's in degrees, and then equals. On my phone, I press the 26 first, and then I press sine. And I got 0 0.4384. You want to round correctly. So if it's above 5, you add 1 to the next uh, 10,000th term. Oops. 4, 3, 8, 3. 4, not 3. This is getting messy. All right. So I need to exit drawing. And hopefully my screen will go back to normal. Yes, it does. And next page. I don't always need a calculator because we have our sides as ratios for the 30-60-90 triangle and for the 45-45-90 triangle. So the sine of 30 degrees, sine is opposite, so that's A over hypotenuse, which is 2A. So this one would be A over 2A. Well, the A divided by A is 1. So this would actually be 1 half. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Okay. And then the sine of 60 degrees, if I have 60 degrees, here's my 60 degree angle, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would be square root 3a over 2a. And again, the a's are going to cancel, so I'm not even going to write it, because that's just going to be times 1. So square root 3 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent side to 30 degrees, <clears throat> which is square root 3a divided by the hypotenuse. So square root 3a over 2a, this one gives me square root 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the sine of 60 degrees. The cosine of 60 degrees, here's my 60 degrees, is still my adjacent side, which is the a, over 2a. So I have 1 over 2 and the A's cancel. The tangent, tangent of 30 degrees, is the opposite over the adjacent. So the A's are going to cancel, and I have 1 over the square root of 3. Now, we don't usually like to write square roots in the denominator for a final answer, so to get rid of it, I multiply the top and bottom by square root 3 over square root 3.
So I get 1 over 3. Or, sorry, square root 3 over 3. Square root 3 is being multiplied by the 1, and square root 3 is times the square root 3, which is 3. I'm really multiplying by 1 as long as I'm multiplying by the same number on top as the bottom. The tangent of 60 degrees, the tangent of 60 would be opposite of 60 is square root 3a over adjacent is a. And the a's would cancel, and that would just leave me with square root 3. Right. Exit drawing again. Next page. Oh, it erased it all. Okay. The sine of 45 degrees. Um, I, I have a square here. And the, uh, 45, 45, 90 is half of the square. The diagonal is the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm looking for the sine of 45 degrees. The sine of 45 degrees, here's 45 degrees. It would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that the a's would cancel again, and I'd have 1 over the square root of 2. 1 over the square root of 2. If I multiplied by the square root of 2, top and bottom, I get square root 2 over 2. Square root 2 over 2. And the cosine of 45 degrees is my um, adjacent over my hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse would be the same thing because it's a over a square root 2. So that's 1 over square root 2, and then multiply top and bottom, I still get square root 2 over 2. So I get the same thing for cosine as I do for sine for 45 degrees. For the tangent of 45 degrees, it is the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite is a. Adjacent is a, a divided by a is 1. And so in summary, first of all, you have to have a right triangle to apply SOHCAHTOA. You're taking the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent.